fade into a quiet cosmos, stars flickering across a black sea of nothingness. In the cold and unforgiving stretches of interstellar space where no light dares linger long and silence reigns supreme, a lone traveler drifts farther from home than any human creation in history. This traveler is Voyager 1, launched in 1977, a spacecraft no larger than a compact car, yet more profound in legacy than most monuments of humanity. Its mission was clear, study the outer planets and then continue endlessly into the cosmic unknown. Over the decades, Voyager 1 has crossed immense thresholds, past Saturn, beyond Neptune, then beyond the heliopause, the outermost limit where the sun's influence fades into galactic shadow. Today, it roams over 15 billion miles from Earth, sending back ghostly signals, fragments of data whispered across eternity. But recently, Voyager 1 didn't just send back routine telemetry or cosmic background noise. It delivered something different, something unnerving. NASA scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory began receiving strange, low-frequency electromagnetic pulses. At first, they seemed benign, just another fluctuation in the interstellar wind. But these waves held patterns, repeating rhythmic pulses unlike anything seen before. They weren't random. They were precise, timed, structured, the waves weren't echoes of exploding stars or background static from ancient quasars. They weren't cosmic rays or plasma noise. They weren't even solar interference. They were organized. The signals, originating from a direction devoid of any known stellar body, began to intensify, not chaotically, but with a deliberate escalation, as if something were turning to look. Voyager had entered a place we did not chart. Not empty, not lifeless, but watched. NASA's top astrophysicists began ruling out possibilities. No known natural phenomena fit the data. Then came the terrifying alternative. What if it wasn't natural at all? The idea was heretical, even absurd, yet the data suggested otherwise. The waves followed mathematical patterns. They used prime numbers, a universal constant theorized to be a signature of intelligence. Embedded within the signals were fractals, geometric self-replicating structures tied to quantum mechanics and chaos theory. This was not a glitch. This was design. And the worst part? The signals seemed to target Voyager 1 directly. Instead of radiating outward like typical cosmic energy, the wave narrowed over time, homing in on the spacecraft. The signal was adjusting, as if tracking the probe's movement. That meant one horrifying thing. Something out there knew Voyager was there. And not just that it was there, but where it came from. Imagine sending a message in a bottle into a boundless sea and having someone not only find it, but send a coded reply. A reply that watched you. Engineers discovered that as the signal evolved, it began exhibiting gravitational distortions, space-time fluctuations not seen in normal interstellar space. It was as though Voyager had passed near a gravitational anomaly, a massive object cloaked in invisibility, warping the very fabric of the void. There are no known black holes in Voyager's vicinity, no rogue planets, no neutron stars, and yet the math didn't lie. Voyager wasn't just hearing a signal. It had been pulled into something's awareness. Then, embedded within the original wave, scientists found a second pulse, subtler, slower, barely distinguishable from background static. When isolated and amplified, it revealed something staggering, time delays. The signal was bouncing, not simply broadcasting. Voyager was acting as a node a relay in what may be a massive interstellar communication network. Each delay perfectly aligned with distances well beyond Voyager's current location. 
implying this was part of a far-reaching infrastructure spanning light years. Who or what built it? Perhaps a civilization ancient enough to talk not in seconds or days, but in centuries. Perhaps Voyager hadn't received a response. Perhaps it had intercepted a conversation millions of years in the making. As the team dug deeper, a new anomaly surfaced. Voyager's trajectory had shifted. Minuscule deviations, tiny nudges from an unknown force pushed the spacecraft off course. No known gravitational body could explain it. No software malfunction was detected. The only explanation? Something was moving it. Could it be a cloaked planetary object? Or worse, an artificial structure floating dormant in deep space? The signals intensified for several days. Then they stopped abruptly. Not with a fade, not with a glitch, just silence. It was as if a door had been shut. But even in the silence, Voyager's systems began to act strange. Instruments showed residual energy spikes. Calibration refused to reset. It was as if the probe itself had been touched, changed. Nothing in its decades-long journey, not Jupiter's radiation, not Saturn's storms, had caused these effects. And then came the haunting question. Was this a test or a warning? Had Voyager entered a region where life, artificial or otherwise, had placed a boundary? Something out there had seen us, touched us, and then closed its gates. Theories ran wild. One group believed Voyager had encountered a sentinel, a passive, ancient guardian left behind by a civilization long gone. Another posited it had encountered a non-biological consciousness, not built of flesh and water, but of electromagnetic fields and gravitational flows. A being, perhaps, that drifted through the cosmos not in ships, but as a part of space itself. In this scenario, Voyager wasn't speaking to a machine. It was brushing against a mind. A mind that existed on timescales far beyond human comprehension. One that now knew we were here. Humanity had always imagined first contact would come with fireworks, grand ships, language, light. But reality might be quieter, stranger, darker. Voyager 1, a machine long thought to be forgotten, might have spoken the first true word between species without even meaning to. And perhaps the void replied. Maybe not with hostility, but with awareness. Now, the question remains.